We are joined now by Senator Tommy Tuberville of the great state of Alabama. Um, going to dive into a uh, bunch of stories with him. But I want to start, Senator. You guys, in just a couple of hours, I believe, are going to have a press conference about the latest assassination attempt on President Trump. I saw where Joe Biden said that they did not have enough Secret Service agents to be able to protect him. I can't believe in our $6 trillion budget that there isn't the, the, the dollars there to be able to protect Trump from somebody trying to kill him. What was your reaction to this second assassination attempt, and what do you guys expect to be saying in a couple of hours on Capitol Hill? Well, first of all, Clay, uh, enough of the excuses. We're at DEFCON 1, and uh, once is too many. Now tw- it's happened twice, uh, and there's no sense of urgency here in the Hill. Everybody's kind of going going live as usual. They don't understand that President Trump works 14, 18 hours a day, never sleeps. That's why he did it when he was president also. He's going to go touch people. He's going to do two or three uh, rallies a day. He's going to do interviews. He's going to be out consistently. He's not going to work a six to eight hour day like Kamala Harris or Joe Biden and then go to the beach. He is a guy that loves his country. And I think they're trying to keep him in the basement and not give him the things that he needs. But we're asking for more help, uh, they're out of Secret Service people, they say. It takes three years to train somebody, so the, so the water underneath the bridge for that one. But, hey, Navy SEALs, Rangers, DHS, uh, we need more people. We need it immediately because it's going to happen again. We've got mental illness all over this country, and with all these goofball Democrats out there hollering fascists and Hitler, uh, it's coming again. we got to protect the president. Senator Tuberville, appreciate you being with us. Are you getting a sense from the the various security agencies here that are involved that there is a willingness to beef up security, do more, add more resources. I mean, basically, is, is DHS, which falls under, obviously, the executive branch and therefore the Biden White House, are, are they doing or willing to do all that is necessary to ensure the security of President Trump going forward? Or are you sensing there's still, for some reason, any kind of bureaucratic slowdown or resistance yeah uh, excuses that's all we're getting ex- excuses and i haven't talked to president trump in the last couple of days but i will but uh this is not his job it, uh, this is our job this is our job as republicans we stand up for our nominee we stand up for the former president and his family uh but the problem we have here is it's just a sense of urgency there's nobody really concerned hey you know if he he shouldn't go out and play golf or he doesn't need to do all these uh, rallies. He needs to stay at home. Uh, I think they're trying to keep him in the basement. Uh, but I heard Merrick Garland today, and what a joke he is, uh, and all the three-letter agencies, FBI, CIA, and, and the DOJ, they're a joke, uh, so they're not going to help. The only one I feel good about would be the military because most of the military people are still on the side, especially the people in special operations. So I wish we would get some of those people to help and be – you know, be rotating around because these people get tired. President Trump never gives out. He goes and goes and goes. So we need special people to, to do this protection. But we can't wait on the Democrats, nor can we wait on some of these Republicans that just say, hey, you know, it is what it is. Report out there that President Trump is going to go to the Georgia Alabama game next weekend in your home state of Alabama. Uh, I'm wondering if you've heard about that. Second, as an Auburn guy, how in the world can you feel going to Georgia, Alabama? I mean, that's like the two biggest Auburn rivals on the planet going head to head. What's your take on that? Do you think he's going? Do you think you'll be there? Well, we're, I was talked to him last week, and he's going. As, as of last week, before this second second assassination attempt, I just don't know the problems that occur. I knew I know when he went. I was there with him at the LSU Alabama game a few years ago. Uh, when uh, he was president. and uh, That's one of the best a- football games I've ever seen, Coach. And that yeah. stadium, uh, Bryant-Denny Stadium, went crazy for Trump. That was Joe Burrow against Tua. Was that 2019, I think, sir? And I would imagine yeah. that reception he would get for Georgia-Alabama next weekend would be every bit as loud, if not louder, than the one he got then. I agree. Uh, I'm going. Uh, and, you know, I go to some of the Alabama games anyway. Now I'm a senator, so... Uh, I, I try to represent everybody, but, uh, you know, uh, we'd love for president Trump to come, but we want to keep him safe. Uh, everything, uh, that I've heard is still on, but 
you know, it's up in there. But it was. I think that'll be a great ball game. I was a little surprised last week with Georgia how tough it was for them at Kentucky, but uh, they better play a whole lot better, you know, against Alabama. They're getting better. Senator Tuberville with us now. And, Senator, uh, we're, we're hoping very much not only that there's a Trump win in this election. First off, obviously his security has to get elevated and, and be um, absolutely world-class. I think people had thought maybe before all this had happened that that's what he had been afforded, but clearly there are massive gaps and shortcomings in what has been assigned to him. Uh, but let's assume that he, he does get to election day. Okay. Wins the election, having uh, the Senate in Republican hands, also very important. Uh, how are you seeing that right now? And, and also how are you seeing uh, the state of Georgia, which Democrats are, are insisting is still very much in play? Yeah, I think it's still close in Georgia, but I think they got a better uh, handle on it. We won't have all the COVID you know, voting by ballot, mail ballot, you know, two or three weeks in advance. Uh, COVID was right up the, the Democrats' alley when it comes to comes to uh, working the angles on an election, but I think it'll be better this time. The Senate, I've been traveling all over the country in the last couple of months working out for, with, with different uh, candidates. I, I think we're in pretty good shape. I'm looking between 51 and 53 seats that we'll win in the Senate, uh, Hopefully, maybe even more than that. Uh, but we've got some good races going on. Spending a lot of money, but we've got some real good candidates. And then President Trump, too, on the ballot's really going to help a lot of these people, especially guys like Tim Sheehy from Montana going against the guy that's been up here forever, uh, John Tester, who says he's an, a moderate Democrat, but he votes uh, with uh, Joe Biden every time they vote. And uh, last time I looked, they're not moderates. They're far-left progressives. Senator, when you actually break down the election is it as staggering to you that people are going to show up and vote for kamala as it is to both buck and me when we sit around and look at this it feels like we're being sold a bill of goods uh there's numbers coming out of pennsylvania that they're not getting as many absentee ballot mail-in requests on the democrat side as there was in the past it feels like a lot of this enthusiasm for kamala is just fake do you do you feel that way too well, at the end of the day, they've done nothing but lie for three and a half years. I've been appalled at what they've done, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, to our country. Ten million illegal immigrants, violent crime up 37 percent, rape up 42 percent, robbery up 63 percent, drugs everywhere, gas prices hitting the roof, military is being, is being destroyed from within. All the three-letter agencies are so corrupt, we don't know who to trust, and then uh then you throw on top of that all the foreign relation problems. Guys, we are in so much trouble with the $36 trillion in debt. Uh, President Trump, you know, we all hope he gets elected. But, my God, he has got a handful of trying to get this country back straight. It's over with if, if Kamala Harris wins. The country as you and I uh, have grown up in and have seen the freedoms and the things that are uh, we've had the opportunities, uh, it's all over with. Uh, it will be a lot of strain on, on the country and the taxpayers going forward. The taxes will hit the roof to pay for all these nonsensical things that uh, all these Democrats want to do. By the way, last question for you. Did you see where that moron Tim Walls said that uh, Democrats had taken back football fans from Republicans because he was an assistant coach in high school back in the day? Uh, I, I, this is one of the craziest arguments I've ever seen. Uh, I, you just mentioned you're going to be at Georgia, Bama. I hope to see you down there. I'll plan on being there, too. I'll tell you this. There ain't going to be a lot of Kamala Harris voters in any college football game that I'm going to this fall. <laughs> Tim Waltz, uh, where did this guy come from? Um, I mean, he's a joke, an absolute joke. He can't tell the truth. And of, of all people for, him, for her to pick, she could have picked somebody that would have given her a much better chance, but – this guy is not going to bring one vote to her because he doesn't stand up for the country. You know, he, he looks more like a, uh, he's more of a Chinese fan than he is an American fan. And, yeah. uh, and I, hate to, I hate to say he was, he was even a, even an assistant coach at one time because he doesn't represent the values our country represent when it comes to coaching kids. Amen. Senator Tuberville, I'll see you next week, hopefully at that Georgia Bama game and, uh, and have a good press conference here in a couple of hours. All right. See you. Bye. That is Senator and Coach Tommy Tuberville. I feel good about football fans not voting for Kamala Buck. Very confident about that. But I got to tell you, 2024 will go on the record as one of the years with the greatest number of data breaches in history.
history. Uh, just in the first half of the year, more than a billion records have been stolen or compromised. The likelihood of your personal data being involved much higher than you would like. And you can't control when the next breach will happen from these companies, but you can help protect yourself by having the right online identity theft protection. It's important to understand how cybercrime and identity theft are affecting our lives. Lots of places can accidentally expose your personal info. That's why LifeLock monitors millions of data points a second for risk to your identity. If you do become a victim of identity theft, a dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work with you to fix it. It's easy to help protect yourself with LifeLock. You can join right now, save 25% off your first year with my name, Clay, that's C-L-A-Y, as your promo code. Call 1-800-LIFELOCK or go online to lifelock.com. Use my name, Clay, for 25% off.